Well, guess what? It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. And George and I are going to be very happy to welcome our guest, Bo Weaver, who's right there. Wave hello, Bo, and say hi. Well, he doesn't have to say hi, but we'll get to him. But we're going to talk about recording on the road and some stuff from his career and lots of advice. And if you've got a question for him, Put it in the Facebook chat room or in the chat room on YouTube if you happen to be watching there. And we the way, I don't talk unless I'm getting scale. That's why I didn't say it. Damn. <laughs> Get the lawyers. The check didn't clear. That's Dang right. it. All right. All that and more on VoiceOver Body Shop coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Winham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Bow. Boom. <laughs> yes, I'm growing a beard again. Uh, seeing as this thing is never going to end. Uh... You know, it's like, but then again, I grow it and then I shave it off. And then the missus is like, you look 10 years younger. So I do the same thing. Just, <laughs> today. It works great, it's a week cycle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just waiting for this thing to turn, turn totally white though. You know, it's, I want the mustache to turn totally white. That's what you want. That's what I want. I've been wanting that for years and it's just, you know, it's like half of it is white. You know, as you can see it. Salt and pepper. That's right. But anyway, we're here to help you with your home studio stuff and talk about voiceover. So we figured we'd bring somebody in who really knows voiceover. You know, when they invented voiceover, this guy was handing one, holding one of the hammers. He, so, he, he'd forgotten more about this business. I, than I would tend to think so. Most of you guys. Yeah. So let's let's introduce our guest. Bo Weaver is one of the West Coast's perennial A-list voiceover artists. Heard on network television promos, syndicated television shows, trailers for feature films, cable network documentaries, national radio and television commercials, and is the signature voice for many major market television affiliates. He's also had lead roles in animated series like Superman and the Fantastic Four, and is frequently heard as the live announcer on Hollywood award shows such as the Primetime Emmys. Let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. You know, he can't hear your applause. But there he is anyway, Bo Weaver. Bo, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Golf I time. love the opening to your show. But, I, you know, my favorite part about it is is the shot where you guys go. <laughs> like that. So I wanted, to, I wanted to have one of those. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've been you doing it. We, I, when we first started the show, we started doing that, and it's just become sort of our thing yeah. anyway but now i can't see a damn thing if i do it it's very clear very quickly why i'm an off camera <laughs> <laughs> well yeah uh, anyway i you, you know I, I i have said many times that i i try to explain 
to my relatives back in Oklahoma, what it is I do for a living. And they, they don't get it. You know, it's like, I was talking to one relative, uh, Aunt Regina. And she says, well, now, honey, uh, we watched that television show that you said you were on and we didn't see you. Didn't see you. <laughs> and I said, well, you see, that's because what, I'm the narrator. And so, so it's the voiceover. She goes, well, now, when is that? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, when you hear somebody talking, but you don't see a mouth moving, you know, like that, it's off camera. And she says, well, honey, maybe if you cut your hair, they would let you on the yes. <laughs> That sounds familiar. It's like, ah. No, it's not that I'm trying to be on camera and they won't let me. It's, I mean, you know what? Never mind. It's kind of arduous. Yeah. Anyway. So, you know, you're joining us from the, the lovely little burg of uh, Ojai, California, which is a beautiful place. And uh, how long have you been living there? Well, full time for about eight years, but I've had a part time home here for about 25. Ah. And um, for uh, for a number of years, I thought we, our, our home base was uh, Toluca Lake. And I really felt like I had to kind of keep my presence, you know, there. Uh, but after I noticed that I had not booked anything out of my home studio for like 18 months, I said, okay, I can let it go, you know. And e even then it kind of, I, I was nervous about yeah. uh, about doing that. But not, not out of your home studio, but outside your home outside studio. Outside of my home studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything was booked out of your home studio at that yeah. point, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. yeah, so it's about eight years full time and, and uh, you know, uh, it's worked out great. Great. Love being here. Yeah. So what, what has, you know, I've been asking everybody this when they come on because, I mean, clearly these are weird circumstances that we're living under these days. But how has, you know, the pandemic affected you know, your career in business so far? Well, not that much, because right now, almost everything I'm doing is is either in uh, promo or um, cable network documentary. And I've, I've been doing some national television campaigns, but it, it all works out of the home studio. And, um, and even before the pandemic, I rarely left. And now I have kind of a long work day. Um, you know, it starts East Coast. I, in fact, I'm uh, uh, working uh, for television affiliates. There are about 25 of them that I'm the signature voice of. And basically, pardon my French, but I'm their bitch. You know, <laughs> you, you got those golden handcuffs on call, on, yeah. on call yeah. and, across five time zones. So starts early and, uh, you know, I wrap up at about six. And so I, most of the time I don't leave, you know, and uh, that was so before pandemic. So the, the thing that, that has been difficult is not being able to go and <laughs> golden handcuffs, yeah, uh, <laughs> and see family. And that has led to my traveling in an RV, which is one of the things I want to share with you about, um, because a lot of folks know, I guess I've shared a few times on social media that I sometimes travel to see family in an RV and I, I work from the road. And I've kind of got that dialed into where it works, but there are some tips I can give you if that's something you're considering, but I also want you to think really long and hard about whether you really want to do this because yeah. there are some uh, there's some drawbacks and there's a little more to it than than you might think. So we'll, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later, I guess. Absolutely. Oh yeah, we absolutely. And you've got, you actually did a video for us that we're going to show in a little bit, you know, giving us a tour of your RV, which will be rather interesting. Now you, you came out of radio like I did, you know, and those of us that came out of radio at least had some skills that we could immediately apply to recording, you know, voiceover audio. But it seems like a lot of people who are in radio and come out don't quite have the success rate that they all like. Why? And I've heard well, you talk about this before many times. It's a it's a it's a completely different ball game. Um, when when I was in radio, that was a different era. Uh, and in those days, 
we had engineers who ran all the equipment. So uh, while I, I probably had, you know, skills, most of the guys who worked at, at the level I was working uh, in, in radio uh, in, uh, never touched a microphone, never touched, uh, you know, a piece of recording equipment. Because we weren't allowed to. It was a different union that, you know, those, those guys were nabit. We were after it. Um, but, and, and it never occurred to me uh, voiceover, the people on commercials, you know, I paid no attention to it. And I was working in radio in Los Angeles in the uh, mid seventies at the number one station in the fricking world, KHJ, back when AM stations were the, the big pop music stations. And um, I came into the studio one night, again, remember we, it, the air talent can't touch the equipment or we would be find we, uh, we, there'd be a grievance written up you know and i came into uh, the station at night and one of the other disc jockeys dave sebastian williams who is oh, yeah. the dave of the dave and dave studios right. uh, in, you know um he was one of the other on the air talent and he was in one of the production studios running off copies of something on small reels of tape and I, I saw him in there and I said, Dave, what are, what are you doing? You, you can't touch this equipment. And he said, shh. shh, shh. <laughs> and I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm making copies of my voiceover demo. And I said, voiceover demo? What, what's, what's that? And he potted up the monitor and I listened and I said, yeah, but Dave, that's just a bunch of spots. And he said, Bo, do you not understand that that's the real business? What we do on the air, we're just filler for that. That's where the money is. I said, really? And he told me a few stories about a couple of television campaigns and what the guys were making in residuals uh, from class A television campaigns. And I went, <laughs> oh my God, really? I gotta get one of those. And he said, "Well, not so fast. Um, they don't like radio guys." I said, "What do you mean? We're on the top station on the planet." He says, "Yeah, but we have a sound that they hate." <laughs> yeah, really, said, really. <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, but there's a kind of a therapy for that. There is a workshop." run by Joan Gerber, who was the top female voice talent in the world at that time, did tons of animation, a lot of national uh, commercials. She was quite amazing. And she was running a, a workout group at her home up off Mulholland. And so Dave said, it's on Wednesday night, I'm going, you can go with me. So I did. And um, so, the, so here's a bunch of actors in her living room. She had a copy stand up at the front and, um, you know, there was a script. And the first thing you did is you just d did a quick, you walked up, said your name, did a quick take as kind of a warm up and an intro. And I'm thinking, well, see, see, by the way, at, at KHJ in those days, about 60% of the commercials on the air were read live to a music bit because otherwise they'd have to pay talent to the, you know, if we recorded it. So, so I did live commercials all the time. So I was, oh. mm -hmm. and I so was wondering why all that stuff's done live, like Love Boat and all that stuff in the 70s. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. They did it all live. It, I was like, they got tape recorders. Why the heck are they doing yeah. it live? It was a different uh, fee structure. So, ah. so I'm sitting back and going, oh, dude, I'm nailing this. So I walk up and it's like my name and I say, Bo Weaver and Red Spot. And Joan Gerber was sort of looking over here and she wheeled around and went, disc jockey, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Disc jockey. Yeah. I can smell you guys a mile away. <laughs> and I got to tell you, that's a bit of a weenie shrimp. Just a know? bit, just a bit. And, um, but, but as the, the thing progressed, I, I got the idea of, oh, there is an actor's approach to commercial copy that's entirely different from what a radio guy does, which is all about sound 
and and manipulating the voice to produce a you know a, a sound you know and i went wow i don't know how to do that i think i want to learn this and so it kind of challenged me and hooked me so i i kept coming to the workshop and so I, I, one of the other uh, talents on the air at KHJ at the, at the time, I went and told him about it. I said, oh my God, you would love this. This is this voice actor's workshop it's right up your alley. You should come. And he said, well, yeah, I might come <laughs> if they want me to teach. <laughs> oh, oh, ego. Boy. Ego prevented him from being willing to learn something new. And some, I don't know why, but I was, I was willing. And from then on, I was hooked. And it took, you know, I stayed in radio for a few more years, but putting all of my attention on developing those skills and learning to do it a different way. And eventually, you know, weaseled my way, you know, into a kind of a career. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find it fascinating. I, you know, I, we, a lot of actors have been, you know, very busy trying to get into voiceover because there's nothing else going on. And, you know, and you have to explain to them. It's like, because they want to try and sound like they're on the radio. And it's like, no, no, no. When you're playing a scene on camera, are you playing to the camera or are you playing to the scene? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, I played to the scene. Well, so of course, same thing. Treat the microphone like a camera and be an actor and forget the well, microphone. So, is there. so many radio guys have said, what are you talking about? I've been cutting spots. <laughs> Since I worked at a radio station in Monroe, Louisiana, when I was 15. Right. I said, okay, I know it. it's commercials. It's a microphone. It's talking. But it's not the same thing. And that takes a really long time for that to sink in. What What is the process? And, and how, what do you mean it comes from a different place? What does that even mean? Well, the people who figure that out and find out how to reveal something of their heart... You know, um, those are the people who are able to make the transition, but most radio folks don't. Now, in yes, you will find, you know, a, a way to make a living uh, doing um, car commercials, you know, for, right. you know, it's the Labor Day sale at Venture Auto Mall, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. A radio guy can, can, you know, can make some coin doing that. But if he's going after the the national television commercials or or work in other venues, he's got to find an entirely different place to come from. Really, can be done, but it requires being willing to be a beginner again. And a I, I I smell the radio folks too when I'm working with folk, but it's not typically the voice; it's the gear. Yeah, well, yeah. RE twenty and a Symmetrix five twenty eight, and I'm running Cool Edit Pro on a Windows XP PC. I'm like, production guy. You come from radio by chance? <laughs> <laughs> well, the the people have asked me what uh, what the most important piece of gear that I or equipment that I have, and I tell them it's my ears. You know, really, mm -hmm. ears and heart. You know, that's. Uh, and the other thing, and I, I'm not, not going to go into a whole long thing about this, but one of the biggest things that a radio guy has to learn is, is, is to breathe differently. He has to learn to breathe. And um, radio guys who are listening in earphones are often listening through some very heavy on-air processing. And one of the things they're doing is they're trying to fight the compression. <laughs> Only some of the on ninety five, you know, and which sucks up the breath, right? Which which causes you to truncate your breaths, and um, it just com and plus listening to yourself. Hi, I'm Johnny doing that. You know, you are reacting to the sound of your voice in the in the cans and adjusting to it in real time, which creates a feedback loop. And it takes you out of the moment. You are now directing yourself and producing yourself. Now, the, you know, I don't want to diss this because this is an amazing skill to have, to be able to produce, direct, think ahead while being the performer. But it totally makes, it makes it a results-driven performance. Yep. You know, 
And, and like I say, you're out of the moment. So finding a way to be present in your body, in your breath, and in the moment is that's the biggest hurdle for a guy who comes from radio, I think. Yeah. So w w you do so many different genres of material. I mean, you do the promos and you do the live announce and you, you've you been doing animation. and all. What's your favorite? What 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 really is your, your thrill when you're when you get to you get a you get a gig? Well, you know, I have done a little bit of all of the, these different genres. Um, but mostly what I'm doing is is promos now. Uh, I haven't done animation in years. That was never really my strong suit. I kind of, you know, uh, I had some really lucky breaks and really enjoyed it. But that's that's not my primary thing. Um, for a good bit in the 90s, I did a lot of trailers. Uh, and, and I really liked that. Uh, they're not, for whatever reason, they're just not buying me now. And, but I really enjoy the long form cable network documentaries like for Discovery and, uh, you know, National Geographic and Animal Planet and Smithsonian. Right. The longer form, uh, it's longer storytelling. And what I like about that is that it gets to breathe a little bit. There are pauses and it's not all so compressed into a short little period of time. And they edit to the voice not the other way around. Right. And, and I, I just like that. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's always fun stuff. If you're just joining us, our guest is Bo Weaver who does everything uh, <laughs> when it comes to voiceover. Um, Can I make a comment about that? That everything thing, Dan? Sure. Go for it. Uh, I know you were probably getting ready to, you know, introduce a different idea, but here, here's the thing. Um, it is, kind of accidental, I think, that I've done a lot of different genres. And and one thing I've said to people is there's really not a unified field called voiceover. There's a whole bunch of fields that we lump into a category calling it voiceover. But animation and, and games, which are similar but not exactly the same, are a thousand miles away from voicing a, a, a national television commercial for a big brand for an advertising agency. Right. Promo work is a little bit similar to trailers, but they're miles apart. Yeah. And, the, and each one of these fields has different buyers, different rules, different techniques, you know, and very few people cross over between you know, there's a handful of people that that, uh, that I could name and that you've had on the show that do work in multiple fields, but mostly not. So it, it, it's kind of like you could say that there's a unified field called athletics, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but a baseball player and a football player have, their, you know, very different skill set. Now, I know there's a couple of guys who have done both, but but, you know, the exception proves the rule. It's just, it's, it's, each one is its own sport. Right. You know, and, and I think newcomers are best advised to find one lane, pick a lane, you know, stay in the lane. And once you've established yourself there, you might be able to, you know, branch out from there. Branch out. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so you were going to, uh, introduce another idea, I think. Well, yeah, well, I, we were, we were at the outset, we, yeah, yeah, we were talking about how, you know, because. You know, you, you've got this RV and you go visit family and stuff and you're on the road a lot. It sounds like 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 50 percent of the time or, or no, more. no, not not at all. And and not, uh, you know, this is the first time since pandemic. I, I just got off the road for a month and it's the first time since pandemic that I have have done this. And I started doing this just because my daughters are spread in all corners of the United States. And because of family dynamics, logistics, they can very seldom come here. So I got to go to them. And I can't fly uh, on a weekday because of, you know, recording obligations. Right. So the only really good way for me to do it is to drive in this RV. Well, yeah. So so I have done this and, uh, and, and I've kind of got it dialed in. And a lot of people have been calling me asking, you know, hey, you know, 
we were thinking about this and you know a lot of people have gotten the idea that rv travel during pandemic is is a safe way to go and it seems like it is but i'm going to tell you a, a story that says not necessarily now we are are fanatical about covid protocol and when we when we travel on the road uh the only time i get out of the van is to put gas in it you know <laughs> and i put a doggy poop bag over my hand to press the buttons on the gas pump you know we use our own bathroom we eat our own food you know um and you know, if if we stop at an RV park to stay overnight, it's I just hook up the the electrical and sewer, and that's all I do. I don't use any of their facilities. Yeah. But we have some friends here in Ojai who thought they've been reading these articles saying, "Hey, RV travel has gotten to be really hot, and people are loving it, and you know, uh, thinking that it's safe." So they found one, a, a used RV in maybe Ohio or something to buy. And they went, they went to uh, Ohio to pick it up. They flew from Southern California to, to Ohio, picked up the RV and proceeded to drive back to SoCal slowly over about three weeks. And they were super careful. I mean, they did not do anything outside the van. And a week before they got back to Ojai, after about two weeks on the road, both of them got COVID. Hmm. And, and they got it bad, Ooh. really bad. And they recovered, but, and they don't know how they got it. It wasn't on the plane. It was a good two weeks afterwards, you know. Hmm. So, you know, um, safer. I think it's, I, I feel safer than airplane travel. But it's, you know, nothing's 100%. So let's yeah. just, you know, issue that disclaimer. Okay. Up. Well, you've, you've done a little video for us here showing us how you record on the road. And once again, if you've got a question for Bo, throw it in the chat room, uh, whether it's on Facebook or in uh, on YouTube Live or wherever it is that you're watching. And we'll get to that after the break. But let's take a look at this. So you explaining how it is you record on the road. Okay, you guys, here is a uh, quick shot of the home studio setup. This is the booth that I work in. All right, now let's go out to the portable rig. It's in the RV, which is a sometimes called a class B plus or a class C. So in a sprinter van, 25 feet, eight feet wide. It's a widened sprinter. Okay, I record just sitting at the little dinette table inside the RV. Okay, I'm gonna close the door. This is my setup. Now, as it happens, the acoustics inside this particular van are very good. The walls are absorbent and they are not ringy or bouncy. A uh, quick view of the RV, because I know you're curious. That's the kitchen area. There's the bedroom area, bathroom, fridge, and back here to this dinette. And then this rig, uh, the whole dinette will push out when you're camped for a long period of time, giving you a couple of extra feet of uh, floor space. But this is the way I, uh, I, I record. And uh, notice I've set my little interface. This is the Scarlett iTrack Solo. It's a, a, a Focusrite interface, costs about a hundred bucks. But the preamp is the same as the one in the 2i2 that I use in the, in the big studio. This is a MacBook Air, several years old. It's plenty powerful enough to run one track of, uh, of audio. Uh, now I wanna show you this little contraption I have made to hold the interface. It's the interface and the microphone stand on a little cutting board from Ikea. It's held on with Velcro. 
And I do this for a couple of reasons. Uh, you see these plugs here, 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 headphone, microphone, and in the back, the USB or light, in this case, it's a Apple lightning uh, connection. The connectors on the circuit board of the interface are flimsy and you can easily by jostling them back and forth it becomes kind of a lever and it can break off so i've i've put this here to protect it so as i move it around i'm not going to accidentally break one of my connectors as you can imagine i have done this and this is why i've set it up this way it also needs to be really efficient for me because uh my workflow is such that i have to pull my portable rig out, set up here, and record for clients, sometimes 25 times a day. So I can't be putting things together, taking them apart. You know, it needs to sit, stay ready. So all I have to do is plug it into the computer and put on my headphones and I'm ready to go. So, oh, I'll just, I don't need the headphones here. I'll just do quickly, you can watch me record. On the next Entertainment Tonight, a whole bunch of freaking famous people. Let's see. Now, you'll notice there is not much noise floor here. That's something we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, but noise floor and the reflectivity of your recording space inside the RV is, that's something you've got to really learn to discern, okay? Anyway, uh, internet connectivity. Uh, I've got two devices. Here is an AT&T hotspot, which is good, I will probably explain later, in, in big cities and on the big interstates. Uh, this will do very well. But AT&T's coverage out in the hinterlands is no bueno. So I also have the iPhone that I'm recording this video on, which can be a hotspot, and this iPad, which is a cellular data-enabled iPad. So I've got two other sources of internet on the Verizon network, and they are awesome. They are almost always, uh, you know, super uh, well covered, even even out in the middle of Utah and Colorado, uh, uh, in Western Colorado, where there's, where there's no AT&T, even voice only service, the Verizon network is still strong. So I have never been without internet virtually, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But um, the way this particular RV sounds acoustically, the only thing I've done to treat it is this uh, quilt on the dinette table, and that kills the bounce from that surface. And that does make a, make a little bit of difference. Now, I do have a portable booth that I will occasionally use. Most of the promo work I do is so tightly edited that the spaces between words, which is to say the noise floor, is not really an issue. However, when I'm recording, let's say, a cable network documentary, a long form thing, where, where there's more breathability and space between the words and that noise floor is more important and uh, it needs to, to, you know, it really needs to, uh, to have that space, you know? I have a little portable frame. I'm gonna move this out of the way so that I can put it here. I made a frame for my portable booth, if you will, uh, out of PVC pipe. Forgive my barferama camera work here since I'm doing this myself. I'm just uh, gonna put this up here for a second. Now, I've got a little frame. See this little frame, I can put my microphone and, and interface inside here and either have the, read the script off the iPad or off the, 
off the computer. They will both uh, fit inside here. And I cover it with this quilt. Sorry about the camera work, guys. Um, so I just cover it with a quilt and I get up under here. So, I mean, I, I will seal it up a little bit more carefully when I'm actually using it like this. Uh, so that gives me uh, just a little bit more enclosed uh, space and, and it will also kill a little bit of uh, extraneous noise, a little bit, few dB. Um, and I, I don't always use this. Most of the time I can record, you know, in, you know, just right here in this open space and it sounds fine. Um, but when needed, I will pull out my little frame and put up my little portable booth. But I uh, just uh, am back from a trip where I was recording in this manner uh, for a month and nobody knew any difference. Anyway, that's the way I roll. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. It, it is. is. It's, it's like, like the old days where right? every, every time, time the mics are on, we have <laughs> reverb until, until I hit another, another button. button. Right. right. Hit, the hit the right, right button, button then. then. Okay. okay. Well, I think, I think the, the, mo the, the monitor, monitor mix is on for the feed. feed. Oh, Sue got it. Nope, 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 still got, still got it. it. Anyway, anyway let's, let's take, take a break, break and we'll be right, right back, back with more of Bo Weaver right, right after this. this. Hello. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. It's a place where you can get your body shopped with voices. Come on. Look at Dan's head. So shiny. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the VoiceOver Body Shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough, and the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is, voheroes.com forward slash Start. Again, that's voheroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to voheroes.com forward slash start. Well, we may not be traveling a whole lot, but if you are and you got to be able to record on the road, here's the way to do it with a Harlan Hogan Porta Booth Plus. Easy to handle, easy to get onto a plane. It fits right into a luggage rack, no problem. And more importantly, the Porta Booth Plus is made with real Oralex. Not that fake stuff you get at Banjo Emporium. This is specially made to make sure that your sound is just right when using the Harlan Hogan Porta Booth Plus. Where can you get one? 
very easy. Go on over to voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Look on their front page. You'll see the Portabooth Plus and the Portabooth Pro at voiceoveressentials.com. Voiceoveressentials.com. Get your Portabooth Plus now. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. And we're back. With Echo Free. Echo Free. I don't know. That was kind of cool. Anyway, our guest is Bo Weaver. And we've been talking about recording on the road. We got a lot of questions from our vast worldwide audience. You ready for some of those, Bo? Well, could I, could I give a little uh, background or, or, or just before we go sure. to the question? Please. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's some great things about recording from the road, but I want you to really think about whether or not this is something that you want to do. Um, because when, when you record, you have to get away from traffic noise. Yep. So I look at, you know, my, my, my email. Okay. Okay. Four things have come in. This guy can wait. This guy can wait. Oh, this one has to be right now. We have to pull off the road, get about three miles away from the freeway before that, that freeway roar is attenuated and find a place that's quiet. Well, is it quiet? Your ears have got to learn distinctions of silence. Now, there are crows in the tree in the parking lot. No can do. Yep. No. And there's a air conditioner compressor a block and a half away. No, that's not going to work. You know, uh, there's a leaf blower. No, not going to work. So you got to find a place that's quiet. Now, here's another thing. Uh, if you're traveling when it's hot, um, you're uh -huh. in a tin can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can't have the air conditioning on. Okay? Haven't you had... And, haven't you had somebody turn the engine of the RV, like, literally between oh, takes? My, my wife, with the older RV we had, which was a gasoline yeah. engine... She would turn on the air, uh, turn the engine on, yeah. and I would go, <sighs> you know, and then record a little bit, and then you know, like that. But with a diesel, you can't, you you can't idle, right? So, so no can do. So you uh, traveling in the in the heat of the summer is not really um, uh, realistic. And the other thing is rain. Ah yes. If oh, it's yeah. raining, you're screwed. Yes, there are some. George and I have fit tried <laughs> with, uh, you know, uh, noise reduction, but it is going to so affect the actual voice track. No, if it's rain raining, you're going to go check into the La Quinta and you're going to work the rest of your day uh, in the motel. And so one of the things you have to do when you're tr when you're planning your route is you got to check weather and you have to check a little app that uh, uh I will recommend to you that shows you what kind of internet connectivity, cellular data you have. Um, and it'll show all the different carriers. If you're traveling along major interstates, you're almost always going to have good connectivity if you're on Verizon. But, um, but on the blue highways, you know, which makes the trip way more fun. No, you're not going to have data uh, or, or, you're unlikely to. So you got to plan your route around weather and data and timing. And let's say you're in an unfamiliar time zone and you have to remember, oh, that I get that script at, at one o'clock. Oh, crap. No, in this time zone, that's 11 o'clock. Oh, I forgot. And now I'm in between, you know, places where I have internet. You know? Right. So what this does is it, it <laughs> takes your attention Sounds terrible. It's like playing chess in three <laughs> dimensions. And not only that, you have to think about, okay, what is the charge level of all of my different devices? You know, <laughs> so those are timelines, timelines, time zones, point A to point B in travel. Uh, how much fuel do I have? You know, what's the weather? What's my connectivity? And oh crap, uh, you know, now, if you have a, a spouse that you are traveling with, that you get along really, really beautifully. Which helps. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> At the beginning. If you, if you have children, 
who are traveling and they have to be try to be quiet. Oh, they're not going to be quiet. No, they're not going to be for 30 seconds, maybe. And we travel with dogs. And if it's hot, it's like, <laughs> no, the dogs have to go out. You know, Elizabeth has to go take them on a walk, you know. And so, so there's a lot to this. And if you're on a vacation, yeah, this isn't that much but, fun. Now, yeah. if you're a technical guy, particularly if you came out of radio and, you know, yeah, I got a 29 and a ZR286 that I'm running. And, you know, and that's kind of fun for you. There's a gee whiz factor uh, that's, yeah, it's kind of cool that you can do this for about 20 minutes. And then it's, oh, it's exhausting. Yeah. And it, it takes you out of presence uh, with your family. And if you're traveling for fun, it ain't much fun. And I was just telling George earlier that I just got off uh, the road for about a month and coming home, working in my home studio here is like, <sighs> this is so easy and simple. Yeah. I feel like I'm on vacation being home. So it's kind of like the guy who hits himself on, over the head with a hammer because it feels so good when he stops. stops. Yeah. So you might find <laughs> that this whole RV thing, and again, nothing. if you're gonna rent an RV, listen, there's a lot of technology on the RV that you have to learn. And one of the things that you have to get used to is the, uh, the, the sewer. You, you know, I, in fact, I told a friend of mine, I said, yeah, you know, you have to kind of get used to the fact to wrap your mind around the fact that you are carrying your shit around with you wherever you go. Shit is full. And, and, and my, my friend said, yeah, but aren't you kind of doing that anyway? <laughs> I went, well, you have a point. Uh, so anyway, that's just to say that there's RV technology that you gotta learn. And it's it's not that, that simple. So. So do this if it turns you on and if it gives you a, a possibility of some freedom. And if it's only an audition uh, every day or a, 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 a little recording a couple of times a week, this might work really well for you. Uh, if your plate is uh, fuller, it, it, it takes some doing. Yeah. So I've, I've now just totally turned everyone off to <laughs> Which is not a problem. If you, if it's not for you, if it's not something that, yeah. it, if it's not going to serve you, don't do it. You know, it, it, that's it, like yeah. convincing someone not to climb a mountain that is known to kill people. Good yeah, point. Exactly. Good point. Yeah. Uh, I, and, and I'm going to ask you to put in the chat uh, the names of a couple of apps that if you're going to do this, yeah. um, there's an app called Coverage Question Mark in the uh, in the uh, in the app stores, which will show you what kind of cellular data coverage you have anywhere. It's got a map, you zoom in and find out what you got. Uh, uh, places uh, to, to stay, uh, RV parks and uh, state parks that allow RVs and you know that kind of thing. There's two apps. One is called RV Parky, P-A-R-K-Y. And the other one called All Stays, A-L-L-S-T-A-Y-S. Another one, if you are, uh, yeah, there you go. That's the one. Coverage, literally that's coverage right. question mark. Yeah. Yes, that's that's the one. Um, and they they update the maps all the time, so I found it to be quite quite accurate. Um, if you're driving a vehicle that uh, takes diesel and you're not used to finding diesel, there's a an app called Gas Buddy, which will show you where to find diesel. And there's a really cool little uh, app called I exit so you're coming up on exit number uh 395 off interstate 5 you know uh up near reading and you want to know uh what's at this exit do i want to get off here and find that there's nothing there well this will show you everything that's on the other side of that exit you know wow so so that's that has been uh, super helpful. Yeah. Anyway, that's my overview. And if you want to uh, throw some questions, I'd be happy to. Oh, absolutely. Well, it is. It does sound like three dimensional chess. Well, we got a couple of questions here, uh, mm -hmm. uh, mostly from Greg Glazer, but we'll throw one of his. Do you still have to audition for anything? Oh, sure. I audition all the time. Um, 
I am more selective about uh, what I audition for, um, just because almost everyone will tell you, uh, if you are on the roster of one of the major talent agents, um, you know, in LA, New York, uh, and you book one out of about every six or 700 things that you read for, you're doing great. You're really kicking ass. Um, there are so many people chasing this work that most of our auditions go into some black hole somewhere, Whoosh. you know, and it's never heard by anybody. We don't, you know, um, so I, I tend to audition for things where, uh, where I might have some reasonable expectation that I'll be heard. And when it's right in my wheelhouse, you know, I, I'm not going to do the dad with a Scottish accent. I'm sorry. I just, I don't do that. <laughs> They'll get a real Scottish guy. You know. yeah. And there's plenty of them oh, around. Yeah. yeah. You want to take the question from Mr. Daniel there, uh, George? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. He, he asks you about, um, cause you kind of, you explained what you're doing for your data. So mm -hmm. we know that, but he mentioned a product that I happen to know about called the sky room. Um, have you heard of this thing? No, I have not. So what, what it is, is imagine a hockey puck mm -hmm. that has embedded into it all the radios <laughs> for all the networks. And it seamlessly, theoretically, mm -hmm. roams no matter where you are. As long as there's something, it pulls it in. Um, so maybe on your next trip, I'll look you, it up. if you want to play I'll, with I'll, something I'll new... I, but I, I will tell you, uh, Verizon is almost everywhere, and where Verizon is weak, AT and T tends to be strong. So I'm I've been totally covered. I, I tell you, I went I went camping last a couple years ago up in the Sequoias, mm -hmm. and I was getting ready for three three days of off grid bliss. Mm -hmm. And I pull into the campground, and the you know the the camp counselor not the counselor the host he says yeah, camp host. Mm -hmm. well there's no signal up here unless you got verizon they got that all over the place yeah, up here right. for the forestry service i'm like damn it yeah <laughs> i'm on the grid for three days i, yeah. I want to be off the grid damn it um, <laughs> um fred north says um i remember his name from Transstar. that would be bo yeah was that him and does he remember his catchphrase how do you like me so far yes i've been saying that <laughs> Uh, as in my first stop set uh, since probably 1968. Wow. And it's actually a lift from Rodney Dangerfield. He would after, you know, he would do a couple of punchlines and when he would hit a punchline that didn't land very well, he would go, oh, how you like me so far? Yeah. <laughs> and so I just lifted that and uh, have been using that at, at my uh, first stop set for forever. Tramstar was the first satellite radio network. And we started Transstar when we didn't even know if it would work. And the first, uh, I think, four months we were on the air, we had no affiliates. We were howling at the moon, you know, and it, until the company that owned Transstar said, you know, we kind of got to eat our own dog food and put it on a couple of our own stations or we're never going to sell this. So they did. And then it took off. But we were, uh, uh, we took turns going out in the parking lot and sweeping the snow off the dish, off the uplink. <laughs> you know, this, this was in uh, like 1982 um, in, in, uh, in Colorado. So that was, those were the early days of, of satellite broadcast. He said the PD bet the owner 10 bucks that you were going to say it next break. And you did. Yes. And then he's like, if that was you. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, yeah. apparently it was. It's a piece of trivia. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's another lifetime. Um, you know, radio was my first love. And I was saying to, to Dan and George earlier oh, that it is so long ago, I barely remember being that guy. I had a lot of fun being that guy, but it's just, you know, ancient history. Yeah. And, and sometimes when you're having fun, you don't remember that stuff anyway. Yeah. Um, we got time for like one or two questions here. Rose Klein asks, and this is a question that we, you know, we love asking you, what 
what DAW do you use? What what software do you use to record? We only have five minutes, Bo. Okay. <laughs> twisted Wave. Because I know you have so yeah, much yeah. to say about Twisted I, Wave. It's the only thing I would ever use. I don't. I, 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 if if Twisted Wave was no longer available, I would retire. Really? And I kind of really mean that. Um, that's the only, uh, there's just no other way for me to do the work I do except Twisted Wave. It, it is super duper simple. And you're really the one that introduced it to the rest of us. You know, how, how did you Brown discover and I yeah. and and then George got in the mix and we all you know interacted with Thomas. And it's, uh, you know, it's been a great tool for for everyone. Great. For sure. Uh, uh, what's the last one? The Mike Norgard question about the 416. Let's yeah. see. That was a 416 in the RV, yes. right? He says, mm -hmm. um, do you think a mobile RV rig would require a shotgun or, I mean, even a dynamic mic? Have you ever tried using a dynamic mic, like an RE20? No, no. I don't I don't like the sound of the RE20. Uh, it's a very radio sound. Yes, it and, is. And uh, I, I just don't like it. And, um, you know, the, uh, the 416 is the only thing I've used since uh, probably, nine, uh, you know, 88, something like that. Some, some, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm not interested in another mic and it will forgive, uh, you know, a, a funky space. Uh, but the one thing I just want to emphasize to everybody, if you're going to try to r record in an RV is you've got to learn you got to have ears to know what it sounds like because here's what most RVs sound like. It, they sound like that. That's what it sounds like when you're in an RV. You're in a tin can, you know, and and you got to know that and 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 then treat it with like one of those funky little PVC booths, like uh, you know, I said. But the, but that said, the the 416 will get rid of a lot of that room. Uh, that r harsh room tone. So uh, I, I wouldn't try to record on the road with anything else. Yeah. Well, Bo, thanks so much for joining us and telling us a little bit about life on the road. And, uh, you know, hopefully it won't be as long between our ne your next do visit. It. Don't go on the road. <laughs> Don't, Don't yeah. kill it. It's terrible. We always write, yeah, unless you really have to. What? Don't yeah. do it. Thanks for being with us, Bo. And, uh, hey, great to see you guys. Uh, all righty. Okay. All right, well, let's uh, we'll wrap things up and get ready for Tech Talk right after this. A world of voices. One place wasn't VO Buzz Weekly. Voice over body shop. The better one. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, everybody. It's that time of the show where we get to talk about our fantastic, wonderful, amazing sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. At this point, you have to know what Source Connect is. My gosh, all the agents are nagging you to get it. Um, even if you don't have an agent, maybe consider having it ready to go so when you're asked for it, you can say yes. And what does that mean? You go to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial, but you can even wait to activate your trial. You can sign up, get your account going, get your iLock account set up, have all the pieces in place, and then wait to activate your 15-day free trial to make sure that it doesn't expire by the time you need it. But it gets better than that. If you have had your 15-day free trial and you let it expire, don't worry. There's now 
two-day passes. So you can activate your Source Connect for just that gig and just basically pay for the time you actually need. So you really can't go wrong. There's no major commitments anymore, no subscriptions. If you don't want to go that route, you do have that ability to just activate it and use it for a day or two. So it's a no-brainer. Be ready to use Source Connect for that big gig that comes down the line, which is happening more and more these days thanks to working remotely. And sign up at Source-Elements. And if you have a chance to tell them we sent you, would you do that? That'd be awesome. I'll be right back right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we're back, and thanks to uh, Bo Weaver for really elucidating with us what it's like to do it on the road. Don't do it, unless you really have to. <laughs> Anyway, you've been telling people not to travel and do voiceover since I've known you, Dan. Uh, it's like <laughs> so that just you know that fits right in, right? And and what essentially what he was saying was is like, yeah, I do it, but I know how, you know. And even then, when even though he knows how, it's it's still, still a pain in the butt. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So, so anyway, funny. next week on this very show, we'll be doing Tech Talk number forty three which we will now record now. Uh, and then on November 16th, our good buddy Joe Davis, a master of voice actor websites, will be with us. And we'll be, I guess, reviewing people's websites and seeing what needs to be done better. So, Are you sure it's not Tech Talk 44 coming up? It might be. All right, let's just assume it's one of those. All right, it's 43 or 44. <laughs> anyway, who? well, here's something we know for sure. Who are our donors of the week? We do know this. We do know that Shelly Avellino, Thomas Pinto, George Whittem, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Diana Birdsell, Stephanie Sutherland, Antlin Productions, Shauna Pennington Baird, Martha Kahn, and Stephen Chandler donated to the show and on our uh, little donate button on VOBS.TV. And they're pretty much all probably subscribers because I read those names all the time. But Steve Chandler's so, name. Steve you Chandler. Yes. <laughs> if you want to have your name top of mind, donate a few bucks. That's we'll right. Read it, we'll read it on the show. All right. That's simple. Exactly. Uh, we need to thank, of course, our fabulous sponsors. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Uh, VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. And, of course, our thanks to Jeff Holman doing a yeoman job in the chat room tonight, getting those questions and all that info to us uh, with Bo Weaver. Uh, and uh, our technical director, Sue Merlino, who's sitting there in her mask trying to avoid all the germs that are spreading around in here. But getting it done and getting it done the way it's supposed to be done. And, of course, Lee Penny. Well, Tech Talk is next. Uh, that's going to do it for us this week. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. See you in a bit. <laughs>